everyone, welcome. My name is Michelle and today we're gonna do a science experiment in this glass shop. Now this is the Glass Academy. It's a really cool studio in Dearborn, Michigan. And I've got my friend Jacob Nordine here and he's gonna work with us to try some of these experiments, some of which you can actually do at home. It's gonna be pretty sweet. Experiment number one. We're gonna take this Glee gum. Now this is a natural gum. I've never tried it. I don't know if it's gonna work. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna chew up some bubble gum and blow a bubble. Because why, Jake, some gum? It's an experiment here. I'm gonna show you that you can blow glass if you can blow bubble gum. So let's go. Time lapse. I'm chewing over here. I'm getting close. <laughs> so what's happening now is we were comparing bubble gum with blowing a bubble. It's not hard to blow chewing gum. So Jake's gonna take some hot glass from the furnace, same thing. There's many things he has to pay attention to, like he has to spin the pipe. It's super hot, like right now, 2000 degrees, way hot. But he's gonna blow a bubble. He's not taking deep breaths or huffing and puffing. He's not like a trumpet player that really needs to take a deep breath. He's just gently blowing down the pipe, just a tiny little breath. The glass is nice and hot and voila. Bam. It's Might hot. Might be easier than a bubble gum bubble. <laughs> <laughs> the difference is this is hot super hot, 2100 degrees, and he's gonna constantly spin the pipe to get it to stay round. He's not blowing super hard, he's not tired, he's not taking big deep breaths, he's just blowing gently down the pipe like he was playing a flute, which pushes out the soft glass and is making this crazy looking weird shape, but it's a bubble. It's a pretty good looking bubble. It's still I'm proud hot. of that bubble. We cannot touch this. Solid though. How do you know it's anymore. solid? It's not moving. Hello? That's no bubble gum bubble. Holy smokes, that was so fun. I can't believe it. These experiments are amazing. Get ready for the next one. We've got some more. Welcome to the next experiment. You know what they told me? You can cut glass. I don't believe them. I've got some scissors here and a pasta sauce bottle. Let's see, do you think we can cut glass? No, uh, something's wrong with this experiment. I just don't get it. Jake, can you help us out? Yeah, let's figure <laughs> this out. It's not really making much sense. <laughs> what about these guys? Are those different scissors? Try it. They might be. Well. I think what's wrong is the glass has to be hot. It's ice cold glass. Ice cold. Well, let's go check it out in the hot shop and see what the deal is. Well, we're gonna go for some hot glass here instead of that spaghetti jar. This glass is at 2100 degrees. It's a quarter of the temperature of the sun. So I'm gonna pull some of this out and you're gonna see this looks a little bit different than a spaghetti jar. That's for sure. And let's shape it up and see if we can go cut this glass. Bubble gum bubble. Bam. The important thing is to have the right tool for the right job. These are the shears Jake said will do exactly what he needs to do. He's getting the glass super, super hot, so when he comes over, it's really soft. Let's watch if he can cut the glass. Straight shears into the glass, just gently moving along. And as we do this longer and longer, the glass is stiffening up more and more. It's getting harder to cut almost down to spaghetti jar thickness. Right about there, I can't really cut it anymore, but we got a nice long cut there. What do you think? Is it myth or madness? All right, you guys, this is an experiment that I'd like to try with Michelle. This is a great way to learn the exact consistency of glass. We've got some local Michigan honey here. This is the good stuff. We also have some raw honey. You don't want to use the raw honey, although that's the really tasty stuff because this is way too thick. It's not going to act like glass at all. But if we take a little bit of this soft and delicious stuff and pour it right in this bowl, 
You can already see it's working like glass there. Look at this honey dipper. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna turn in the honey and then I'm gonna slowly lift up and let that little ass bit drip off. This is exactly like glass blowing. You can practice this at home and you can actually change the consistency of the glass. Michelle had a pretty interesting idea. What were you thinking? I've got a cooler here and I've been freezing honey for a couple hours. So you're saying the temperature of this is different. It looks exactly the same, but I'm gonna go in here with our second honey dipper. And you remember how soft that stuff looked. I'm going in here now, hold on. It's harder. Oh my goodness. Look at how much more you can get. Wow. That is so different. Wow. I'll keep turning it. I bet you it'll keep spooling it up. Look at this. That's gotta be twice or even three times as much honey. And look, when I stop turning, it's barely dripping off the end of the pipe. That's like cold glass. That's like 1900 degree glass. What do you think? Is it myth or madness? Don't know. <laughs> I've got another experiment. We're full of them today. So do you guys ever see this stuff like putty? Maybe you break your wrist or something and they give you some exercise putty. That's what this was. And what I'd like to try is to show you how to get different shapes in glass. Now, similar to cooking, it's a really good analogy. If you take something soft and push it against a mold, you might get a shape. So this one makes this like super diamondy pattern one. This one has some ribs in it. And if I push it in, check that out. So Jake said he wants to try this and show you guys what stripes in the glass look like. Let's get this mold in the hot chop. We're going for the optic mold impression into the glass. I'm gonna grab some 21, 100 degree glass, pull it out of the furnace, and we're going to blow a bubble into this and expand it into our mold that Michelle was just showing you guys. So first things first, I'm gonna blow a bubble into this so that we can expand it into the mold. So I shape it a little, blow some air into the pipe, there's our bubble. Whoa, I see the bubble. Bam. I'm gonna swing it and get it prepped up the exact shape of that mold. Now I'm gonna get it really hot and we'll go in there. And as I go into the mold, I'm gonna expand the glass by blowing into the pipe. Take a look at that. I see the stripes. 20 ribs. It's a different shape. Those are some good lines. We're gonna see what happens when this bubble expands outside of being this little hot dog shape. A little bit of air from the uh, scientist. So I'm slowly shaping it. Can you see it growing in size? That should be good. And it's still really hot. Look at how it's moving. But in a second, it's gonna cool down and it won't be moving anymore. Stop. Jake, could you tell me about all the different things you could make from that shape? You could make pumpkins, you could make ornaments, you could make drinking glasses. It's really just a texture, an imprint into the surface of the glass. That way we can shape it however we want after that texture's been on there. And you see after blowing it out and expanding this into a bubble, there's some really beautiful straight lines, about 20 of them, all along this bubble. Thanks everyone for watching. We had a great time doing these experiments with you. Thank you, Jake from the Glass Academy for joining us today. And if you are interested in more experiments like this, tell us in the chat what you want to see. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you on the next show.